So our next session, Jamaica and the Dundercats. We have starring <laughs> Zhang Kong, the legend himself. Crystal Harris is back for a second session. Girl, we fucking love you. <laughs> and last, but definitely not least, George Frost, who is the rogue one in this situation. <laughs> Guys, yes, welcome. Yes, yes, welcome. Hey. What's happening? George, what's yeah. up with your hair? <laughs> uh, lockdown. Yes. Lockdown happened, Dawn. I love it. You're, you're looking amazing, Dawn, in your trailer happiness tea. Oh, yeah. Love your it. Your trailer love tea. It. We're, we're supporting the trailer, guys. And, and you're looking right. gorgeous in your Duffy Share t-shirt. Official Supreme collaboration, naturally. <laughs> is that really official or is that some bootleg Hold shit, on. George? Is that really official? No. Oh, yes. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. It does say a supreme rum. I just can't really. There we supreme go. Supreme rum. Oh. <laughs> Christelle's gone. George would have showed his tips so early on in the session. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, Christelle, Christelle, you're on mute. Oh, here we go. You muted me, and I just I was trying to <laughs> mute myself. My other work and what do you guys. Hello, Christelle. The funny part is, guys, Christelle and I both live in Jamaica, but since we're not traveling, we don't see each other because I only see Christelle in like London, Paris, <laughs> Berlin, New York. I don't see her in, I don't see her in Jamaica. I, I know that yeah, I know that I'm stuck in Jamaica. I've had to actually really work my other jobs. <laughs> like I don't have an excuse. I can't be like, guys, no, I have to go and sell rum. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was like, you can't say I'm you can't say annoyingly I'm stuck in Jamaica. Well <laughs> it, it, it's island fever. Island fever. No, it's yeah, we, all, we all need some island fever. We've got <laughs> no fever. No, I we, love we've got that. coronavirus English island <laughs> fever, which yeah. is just not the same as the Jamaica. Most boring kind. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've always wanted to see you both live in um, uh, what, Kingston, don't you? Yeah. No, I moved. Wait, you moved? Did you? See, I didn't even know that. I thought you were just like I thought you were just spending time in. in no, I live, I live at where I live at where the park now. I can look at the distillery from my yard. Oh, see, that makes so much sense. I need to get some people that work around and actually live there. Yeah. <laughs> Living in Kingston is a little bit of a drag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I, I guess we're here. Uh, sorry, we've completely hijacked Mitch and Don. Oh, no, no yeah. sorry. Who, who are those two guys in the corner? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we, so <laughs> we, we've got another 12 hours, so you guys chat yeah, away. Go, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Dawn, Dawn, where are you? So you guys are in, in um, HQ, are you? We are in Park Royale. Yes, yeah. folks, you heard it here first. The most mi misleading... <laughs> A town in London. <laughs> no, yeah, and name. This is, sounds so fancy. <laughs> I did make it sound a little better than it is. Uh, we're essentially on the biggest industrial state in Europe. But we have Same decorated yeah, for you guys awesome. tonight. Yeah. You know, we, we, we went out there and we thought, you know, what does Christelle, Zan and, and George want us to do? And we thought they needed flamingos, palm fronds and... Well, Dawn, as Walking you know, in. Lady Lady Champagne, I was desperate to come and come and shoot live with you, but you didn't let me. <laughs> George, George emailed me. He's like, "So, uh, where's this? Where's this event taking place? Can I come down and, and, and yeah. be with you live?" I'm like, "We're not letting anyone in the office, George." <laughs> yes, yeah, thank God for it. COVID. Thank God for COVID. You can lock your doors on it now. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be shot like just off where Dawn is and then for you guys to be like, oh, I recognize that. And then me just to creepily just slot in when behind Dawn. Freak you out, Zan. Yeah, it's kind of like our Dave Broom here. He's, uh, you know, just- Yeah, yeah, yeah I saw him. 
is the next uh, 24 hours or probably 48 because, you know, we're overachievers, as I said before. We'll have to have a Duffy George just yeah, yeah, standing yeah, yeah, yeah. behind, you know. <laughs> we'll, we'll relegate and, Dave and, and bring in a Duffy. <laughs> yeah, I literally uh, have never been more excited about hearing a new name than the Dundercats. I love that. <laughs> it was and genius. Actually, George, when we, when we eventually start talking about rum, we'll ask you if you're going to Wait, do a, right, a Duffy version of the Dundercats. Yeah, no, we don't need a Duffy version. This is the Dundercats. And much as Zan is trying to play it all cool, he is desperately in love with me. I do, I do. Um, since the first day I laid eyes on you, George, I've had the biggest... And Zan, where are your kids? The kids? Yeah. The, the kids. <laughs> Fuck, where are the kids? <laughs> I don't know. One was climbing on me like 10 minutes ago, and I don't, I don't know where they are. There's, there's a car, the truck started, the dirt bike started, and then I haven't seen anybody since. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah. Um, and Mitch, can you just explain again, hate to, to um, jump in on the show, but Mitch, can you explain what you meant by I've just seen a crocodile pig on one of your posts? <laughs> that was me. <laughs> Is that you? What? I've, been learning some old, I've been learning some old naval slang. So uh, what's crocodile a crocodile pig? pig? So a crocodile pig <laughs> is a really terrifying beast. No um, way. Yes. Was that was that hey. after, was that hey. after you saw George's haircut? God, look <laughs> look how awful Christelle's lockdown is. I'm getting, I mean, I'm getting in lockdown. <laughs> Christelle, are you sure you're okay in lockdown in one of the most exotic paradises, being waited on hand and foot? Oh, and also obviously a natural straw there, <laughs> darling. <laughs> also, what time is it with you, and why are your curtains closed? <laughs> it's That's one of those fake curtains. There's nothing behind it but a wall. Yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, you look like um, <laughs> you look like what's her name? You look like Carol Baskin with a fake backdrop. <laughs> Did we already oh go? We already went to We already I'm went to room. <laughs> every 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 interview should start with Carol Baskin. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, George! Did hey, you, what are we here for? <laughs> um. Anyway, Mitch, the reason I ask is because maybe this little guy could be quite crocodile pig. He is a crocodile pig. Exactly absolutely, like a crocodile pig. <laughs> I love the fact George has a little promotion over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Subtle, wasn't it? <laughs> the the real life yeah. version of that picture is actually uh, George's uh, Tinder profile pic. <laughs> in his yeah, and the Tinder talk. And, yeah, yeah. Go on. I, I know what you're gonna pick. I, huh? Do you know what? I feel, I feel that next year there's gonna be a crocodile pig from Duffy. There's yeah, yeah. He's our beastly uh, Notting Hill Carnival um, character. How beastly are they? Do they kill they're people? Crocodile. They're crocodile pigs. No, you can have a mega crocodile pig, which is slightly more intense than a crocodile pig. Or ginormous crocodile pig. Or ginormous pig. Mm. crocodile pig. There's different scales. You can also have a crusty picking. pasty, which we quite liked as well. Crusty pasty? Yeah. Is all that this just British, a, all this British thing. humor is just going right over my head right now? I'm so. Oh, confused. nice! Oh no, wait, what yeah. is that? Oh, a crossy passy. That's brilliant. <laughs> it's a tortoise. Hold on. Yeah, it's hard to get which way it is, isn't it? Um, do you okay. want to hear? Do you want to hear something interesting about a Cornish pasty? Well, why not? We're not <laughs> I feel like we don't have a choice. I really feel like we don't have a choice. We're going to hear it anyways. So why why do they why does it have a crust around the edge? Because they needed to keep the juice in. No, no, I can't. No, because they were originally <laughs> eaten by coal miners, and there was loads oh, of uh, yeah, there were loads of poisonous stuff down there. So so they ate like crabs and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and Mitch, Mitch, I've got a question for you. 
Yes. Oh, God. So, so back in the day when we when we used to do our well, we still do them our training sessions. We used to ask, ask a load of rum related questions. A couple of them are related to Black to Black Spot Day, huh? Right. Which we haven't managed to do yet. No, no. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll come. Um, and one of the questions was, in what year was the word rum's first ever documented usage? Oh, that is a good question. I do have several books here, which if I could refer to them. <laughs> Maybe you should read them, Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and George, are you going to enlighten us or you just don't know a fucking yeah, clue? Well, normally people would at least have a go, but um, 16... <laughs> well, 1691. 1661. 1661. Yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty boring answer, isn't it? But <laughs> where was it? Right, that's all I got. Oh. That was <laughs> that's me out. That was George's sum total knowledge on rum. That's all right. And, and Sergio <laughs> said that you're wrong, and it's 1663. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh yeah. no! He's got it. He's got it. He guessed. <laughs> oh, he guessed. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this back into the house because <laughs> George, shut the fuck up for five seconds. <laughs> Okay, the sound's gone. Sounds like that's oh, Or he's found the kids. <laughs> oh, I, I feel like I needed a light on or something. Uh, so, I mean, we called you the Thundercats because Jamaican rum is famous for its thunder. Not that that all of Jamaican rum is thunder heavy or thunder lead, but you know, I think what we wanted to do tonight before George took us on a wild rant. <laughs> random. I'm not sure what we went on, but it was fun. You lucky uh, souls. <laughs> Crystal doesn't look so lucky. <laughs> it's really going to talk about the breaker at some point. <laughs> so, so maybe, uh, maybe Zan, maybe you can open this up. <laughs> I don't even know what. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. Um, <laughs> That's George Frost. <laughs> Don't be sure. No. Um, I guess we, we're here to talk about Jamaican rum in all seriousness. Um, we obviously, as you can see, we have a lot of fun when we talk about Jamaican rum. Uh, but it is something that, you know, here in Jamaica, we, you know, it, we take it very seriously. And it, it is very much intertwined into, you know, kind of our, our social, cultural everything that we do in Jamaica is, is about rum. And, and, you know, I think with, I guess what, at some point we're going to talk about what makes us special and what makes Jamaica what yeah. we need. But, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, Jamaica is one of those islands that, um, you know, no matter where you are in the world, whether you've been here to Jamaica or not, when you hear about Jamaica, there's something that, you know, you kind of relate to and you gravitate to. Sorry, my cat wants to, since we're talking about Dundercats. Oh, oh. 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 oh he's so cute. You know. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Hey. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Point being, J Jamaica's an awesome, Jamaica's dope as shit, so you guys should all come here when you get a chance. Thank you for inviting us, Zach. <laughs> we'll be on the first plane out. Yeah, unless you're from America, then you got to slow your roll a little bit, but... Well, so, so, like, your, oh, sorry, Christelle, we lost you. Oh, we've lost oh. Christelle for a second. We've lost Christelle, I'm George. Let's go back. No, Sam, what, what, what is your Dundercat's name, sorry? Oh, big surprise. Her, his name is Ginger. <laughs> <laughs> That's original. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, the other one, the other cat, which doesn't let me touch her, because um, she's a cat. <laughs> is um is depths uh and sunny my daughter named him depths because she's like dad he's like got a dark coat like the depth of the sea i'm like that is some deep shit girl so we named him <laughs> and i think we have christelle back we have christelle back christelle bring us back to where you were i'm just saying you guys can come and stay here 
because I have lots oh. of room to thanks to COVID. Yay, we're coming, we're coming. Nice. Um, so, you know, I think the question is, is you know, and it, we have to ask it because I think it's one of the questions we've been asking throughout this because I think what we want to know is, is you're right, Zan, what is, what makes Jamaica Jamaica? You know, why is Jamaican rum so special? And, you know, for me, it's one of those rums, I, it doesn't matter who's producing it, I stick my nose in it and I know it's Jamaican. And, and for me, actually, Jamaican rum is one of the ones that really does have a sense of terroir and a sense of place and, and, and immediately, bam, you know, mm. every time we try, we're like, that's Jamaica. So how, why? Well, I think a lot, you know, there's, there's so much, it's funny, someone asked me yesterday, they were like, uh, cause we were talking about Hamden and, and the difference of what, you know, Hamden, Crystal and their team do there versus what we do in at Worthy Park. And, you know, on paper, you know, we all, yes, we're all, we're both double retort pot still distilleries. Um, you know, we're both making, you know, real Jamaican rum, aging, everything doing, we're, we're doing here in Jamaica, but every distillery, we're so unique, you know, in, in terms of when you talk about, you know, the, the yeast that you're using, you know, the, the water supply that you use, uh, just everything about each distillery on the island is so different. Like, even though you can, you can spot Jamaican rum, you know, a month, Miles away, like you said, Don, you know, uh, Hamden is so different than Appleton, is so different than New Yarmouth, than Worthy Park, than, uh, than Clarendon. So we're all, we're all very unique in our own way, but, you know, Jamaican, Jamaican rum always reminds me of, you know, there's an old tourist board saying in Jamaica, it's like, uh, you know, once you go, you know, and it's the same thing with Jamaican rum. It's like, once you have Jamaican rum in your glass, like your, your life is never going to be the same in the best way possible. Is it the water Absolutely. though, Dan? Because that's the only common thread, really, isn't isn't it? I think it's just the water. Yeah, and it's it's through the lime, it's through the limestone aquifer, so it's all yeah. you know natural water here. But I think it's also that you know when we're if you're looking at just a pot still part, you know it it we're all going for you know very flavorful rums, and even when we're at Worthy Park, we make you know our lighter pot still rum compared to Hamden. You know, it, it's still miles and miles away from a lot of the other rums that are out there on the market. And mm -hmm. I think it's it's the, it's just everything wrapped up into it, Christelle. It's like the passion, the love, the the history that we all put into what we're doing. I think it just, you know, it's, it, it makes it special. Uh, Dan's actually asked if it's something to do with longer fermentation times in, in Jamaica. I think so because uh, I yeah for sure we at Hamden our fermentation time is long. I thought it was the longest, but then I just recently found out that where they park, um, you guys do a very long fermentation as well. But I can't speak for anybody else, so I don't really, I don't really know. Yeah, I think um, I mean your your shortest is what, Christelle? Your shortest fermentation time? Our shortest would be like seven days, but as but because because we're we're very much um teetering between science and art all the time we have to just wait for it because yeah. the fact that we don't that we, we um use wild yeast and there's a lot of waiting around a lot of the time and it's very dependent on what's happening at that particular time in the environment whether it's um a certain time of the year or we're experiencing certain weather so there's no there's no textbook answer you know if yeah. we're going after OWH that says that we're going to be waiting seven days as opposed to ten for fermentation. Um, yeah. It really depends, but the minimum, the minimum, minimum would be seven. Yeah. So, see, so we're 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 like on opposite ends because we'll do our our lightest rum is thirty hours, but it's a very controlled you know fermentation, and then our our highest or our wild fermentation is you know two to three weeks. Right. Just like Michelle said, you know, it's at you know it's at the you're at the whim of temperature and, and environmental conditions as well. So, Zan, are you doing both proprietary yeast and um, and wild ferment, or? Yeah, so we actually use three because we use we use a commercial yeast as well. You know, dry activated yeast. Uh, we have a proprietary yeast from our from our cane fields, and then we have um, for our high ester yeast that we use, what we call our wild yeast. Uh, we have we add cane juice, cane stalks, um, and molasses into a twenty thousand. We have four twenty thousand liter pre fermenters, and we let that sit for 90 days so we let that sit in the bacteria culture that develops is what we use for our highest rum. and san is that something you're topping up continuously or it's just fresh batch every every time well we have, we have four of them so you know we we let them sit and then we draw down on it and we do another one hey what's up dude 
Um, just quickly, can the guy? Yeah. Say hi. You're live. Right now. It's live. It's an ongoing talk. You're on Sky. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just just to vindicate our totally epic uh, name, uh, Zan, can you explain what Dunder is? I'm going to defer that one to the start. Um, in terms, just because in Dunder, Dunder in Jamaica is what we we refer to as the you know the waste or the leftover after um, after distillation. But I think what everyone wants to hear is what Christelle does with that Dunder um, yeah. and her muck pits. Um, Say hi. Hi. Visit you? Look how pretty they are. They're so precious. <laughs> I want one. <laughs> he said you can have Sunny. Take me. I don't know if I could manage to do it in like two hours. But, um, yeah. yeah. So Donda. Um. Yeah, I'll take that. I think. I think one of the reasons why people are so obsessed with Dondo and they speak about um, Hamden and Hamden is kind of synonymous with the, this mythical thing with Dondo is that there's also the incorrect that, that Dondo is the same thing as muck, but I suppose we can get to that in a bit, but Dondo is basically what's left in the still after a distillation run. So it's your waste. Um, we utilize our dondo. Well, obviously, we, we, we get rid of some of it on the fields, um, whatever, what we, what we can by law. And we also reuse some of it in our, um, in our, in our, in our next runs. So it's the reuse of that dondo in our subsequent, in our subsequent fermentations that I think, um, makes us, a little bit different and it's one of that that's one of the components of uh, our very high ester rum and, and one of the reasons why we're able to produce high ester rum how does that differ to what you do with it um zan um yeah we actually we capture it back and we use it uh as, for fertigation so we use it all um as fertilizer in our cane fields oh. um you know we have we have that ability because we do have you know, we have a lot of cane fields here so we we are able to um, to use it for that, but we don't use any of it back in, in fermentation. Okay. Yeah. So, George I mean, to, be, to, be, <laughs> to be super clear, oh, so it was too dark. It was too dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so you moved. Yeah. Just a lighting <laughs> change. Just a light. Well, George, <laughs> it's made all the difference. You're looking gorgeous. Thanks. <laughs> So to be really, really clear, the difference between muck and dunder, dunder is almost like a sour mash. It, it's what comes off, it's the lees, the spent yeast so the, that comes off stuff. Muck is actually something quite different um, and is pretty much dunder, but with a butt ton of steroids um, in a very natural way. Would that be kind of? Yeah, okay. yeah. So it's, so the <laughs> muck is this wicked like witch's brew if you want to get back to some mythical terminology it's not really witch but you know it's a hamden brew of bacteria and acids and just wonderfully rich nasty hogo inducing stuff that um it's mixed into fermented molasses and cane juice um and the dondo and that creates the wash that is then sent for distillation um so and that mock comes from the mock pit mm -hmm. oh, I know. Um, <laughs> moment. the mock pit is actually um situated underneath the fermentation house so the fermentation house of the distillery is something that you can actually walk through um and there are these big open air cedar vats um but they're they're on a raised platform all throughout and about eight feet below that is this muck pit so it's like one huge giant pool of gunk and that muck, <laughs> that muck which is the bacteria and the acids that a little um it's plunged uh i don't really know how often because i'm never there long enough to mm -hmm. see how often it's plunged but it's plunged to get everything kind of moving almost like a digestive system um and then buckets of it are put into each fermentation fermentation vat as 
what is really charging the beginning of the fermentation. And, and Christo, are you <laughs> adjusting the amounts you would add for, for different marks you were trying to create? Or is it a similar amount that you'd add for each one and then just the length of fermentation affects? A very good question. Usually I would say yes, but I have no idea. I'll commit to that one. I've stopped lying and, and claiming that I know things that I don't know. I actually don't know because I've, I've truthfully never even really seen it. Um, I've seen it done, but I don't know how they adjust it. Um, that's something that I'm not so, I suppose I need to become a little bit more scientifically inquisitive. I'll have an answer for Black Tart Rum Day. <laughs> for the 48 hours. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Zan, I remember when when you were taking me around Worthy Park, probably a couple of years ago now. You there was a a rumor that you said in terms of adding the, that sort of feistiness, punkiness to the fermentation that some distilleries across the globe were rumored to do some fairly uh, unconventional stuff. Oh, you mean like what I used to say? What the Jamaicans used to put in the muck pits? Yeah. Like, the, I, for the record, that tour with George, I feel like I blacked out for the four hours he was here. <laughs> but um, yes, you know, you do hear all those all those stories. I'm sure Cassell um, gets told them all the time about the use of goats and goat carcass and and bats and all sorts of things in the, in the muck pits. But I can tell you, goats. We eat a lot of goats here. I can't imagine us wasting any in a muck pit. Yeah. <laughs> So in fact, it's not tasty meat. <laughs> it is. It's delicious, yeah. but um, as a curry, not as a part of a rum. Well, <laughs> um, no, that's one of the reasons that I actually I I pushed for us to become more transparent about our methodology and about our production process at Hamden because um, we were new into this, and I was. Uh, Obviously, journalists were starting to, you know, try to gain access because never before had they had any actual real access to hand them. Yeah. Now there's this family that's come and taken over and they put this rum in a bottle. So clearly I wanted to be able to get press out of it. So I wanted to create relationships with anybody who was interested in hearing anything about us. So they would come. And because there was always this kind of mythical, you know, an element to Hamden it seemed like there were secrets to be kept. I started asking questions. I said, what is all this stupidness about bat heads and goat this and <laughs> <laughs> and the master distiller, um, Mr. Wisdom at the time, he says, Christel, nothing like that exists. I can show you what we do, but I think it's just because there's been so much you know, it's only really the connoisseurs that were interested in Hamden. And because there was no accessibility to be able to learn about our process, there were just these, it was more exciting to create something out of nothing as opposed to, <laughs> as opposed to believing that it really wasn't, you know, yeah. carcasses. So Journalism, eh? I know, go figure. <laughs> So um, that's one of the reasons, that's actually the main reason why I wanted to become transparent about our process, especially when I realized that the elements of our production made it impossible for our, for our rum to be produced elsewhere. Because I, I didn't know anything about it at the time, really. Yeah. And I learned quickly that, you know, Worthy Park can't be produced here. We can't produce Worthy Park rum there. Um, Appleton can't reproduce what we do anywhere. Nobody can reproduce what we have anywhere. So like why you could, we, you could why build we... Hamden, you could build Hamden at Worthy Park, like the distillery, inch by inch, but and then you never produce the same rum based on everything else that goes into it. Never. Yeah. And you know, and I think that's going. So someone was bringing it up before this idea of micro terroir. You know, so it's not just about the terroir of an island. You know, that an island's big. There, there are so many different cultural or you know it, climate influences, soil influences, people influences. Um, and actually, that, there, there's that element of that sort of really kind of local and 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 the the temperatures in the warehouses and if you're close to the sea and. And it's so fascinating to understand those sort of micro, what, what makes each distillery so unique. And, you know, George, you, you chose uh, Jamaica's when you were, were looking at the Duffy um, as part mm. of the left. 
and what drew you to that? I mean, what was it about Jamaica that you said, you know, well, actually, I want to use that as part of what we were doing in Duffy? Yeah, I think it's um, it's two things, really, which the guys who obviously know a hell of a lot more about rum than I do, but perhaps being as as close as they are slash, obviously, on the island. One of the things that we love at, at Duffy and me myself is... I think, as 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 both Christelle and and Zan um, reference there, is each island has its own ways of making rum, but I think each island has its completely own personality. And as Zan said, you know, if you go to Jamaica, you you know you're in Jamaica. And I think that in the rum, I think is the perfect expression of that. In that, you know, if you go to Jamaica, and and I'd say the two most famous islands in certainly in the UK, I'd say in Europe, uh, in the Caribbean, are probably Jamaica and Barbados. And I think there's a really nice kind of contrast, not just in, or, or in the same way, in that the rum making style or the style of the rum, I think really reflects nicely on, on the, the kind of vibe of the island. And in Jamaican rum, what, what we loved about Worthy Park is it's got that kind of high ester, as we've been talking about, but punchy, kind of fiery, uh, taste and it kind of cuts through any blend and I think a blend is such an incredible thing but a, a blend made up of quite kind of similar um, sort of quite soft rums is a is a bit pointless and so we wanted that kind of feisty worthy park three-year-old rum to blend with uh, a, a, a terrible Barbados rum because obviously we love Jamaica uh, but we all obviously love Richie Seal, which is where the five-year-old rum comes from. Um, so in a very uh, succinct answer to your question, Dawn, uh, we love the feistiness of it. We love that kind of uh, really kind of dry tropical fruit and the fact that it had, even though it's super approachable and delicious, it had that ability to cut through uh, our blend, but equally, um, as I'm sure Zan will be able to tell you better, you know, it makes one of the best, that his rums and, and Christelle's too make some of the best daiquiris around because they've got that ability to cut through lime and, and cut through the, the sweetness of the sugar. So, so yeah, that's what I like about Jamaican rums. That was, that was so sweet, George. Thanks, mate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go, go, go to the next page, next page. Yeah, and so, um, yeah. Are you going to ask And also, also. From Worthy Park. <laughs> yeah, and also, as you're saying, Dawn, in the, uh, before we came on, I think that, you know, the, the, everyone that you meet and this is this is going to sound cheesy but everyone i've ever met who's even sl slightly connected to rum this it does what it says on the tin rum i think it's it's so welcoming it's so you know the community is an epic one the rum family is 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 an epic institution and i think you know, I, I dread to think what gin fest is like or what <laughs> fest is like. But, you know, as Zan said there, you know, like, <laughs> and, and as Christelle said, even, you know, like we, we just look forward. And, and this is something we always say with, um, with Duffy is we are a rum first, Duffy second. Like we, we, any rum event, as I hope you guys know, we, we're always there. And it's, it's, I'd love to say it's a strategic decision, but it's not. It's just a chance to kind of hang out with some amazing people. And, you know, it, it, anyone you meet you've got a real like likelihood of becoming good mates with them which is so refreshing and, and i remember when uh, when george uh, first met me um and uh, i was working at selfridges and the amazing Ian Burrell, uh brought uh, <laughs> george george introduced me to george and george was like uh, i'm uh, i'm producing a rum i'd really like to talk to the buyer <laughs> yeah you didn't do that justice and and you sweetly said that at that time i'd never met ian and, and you sweetly said he introduced me he didn't have a fucking clue who i was but he it was it was basically it was like it was two weeks i think it was two weeks before no it was like a month before we we're gonna have our like full bottle ready and i saw ian burrell was gonna be at the selfridges um uh, rum night. I think it was a rum night. Yeah, we did a rum night. 
And Ian was talking to this very attractive, but in my eyes, uh, unnamed, unimportant woman. And I was desperate to meet Ian Burrell, like a like an eight-year-old Man U fan wanting to meet Beckham. And I ran up to him and kind of verbal diarrhea exactly what we we're trying to do with Duppy and kind of completely taken aback. He was kind of like, oh, and, and Mrs. Dawn. And I was like, oh, God, I'm so sorry. And, uh, you know, how rude of me. And then I was like, anyway, what do you do? And Dawn was like, oh, I'm a buyer. I was like, oh, cool, for what? And she was like, rum. And I was like, oh, for where? She was like, Selfridges. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> but then, as, as I tell the world and everyone in it, is uh, Dawn was like, love the sound of what you're doing. Come in and see us on Monday. And on Monday, we went in with a, with a mock bottle of the original Duppy, which is actually full with Captain Morgan because that was the closest colour we could get. <laughs> and a tiny little a tiny little vial, which I always think is a really un un like what's the word? Uh anyway, not a great name for what should house delicious liquid, but a little vial of um puppy. And thankfully she said yes, and the rest is history. <laughs> I didn't realize that bottle was full of Captain Morgan. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God I didn't just, I mean, think how different it would be if I just poured the wrong bottle. <laughs> I mean, a whole different story. I'd be able to buy epic swag like this, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, Georgie. Georgie, Georgie. <laughs> Never a dull moment with this one. I know. It is a bad hair bottle, isn't it? Oh, it's fucking terrible, man. Yeah. You can talk. <laughs> this is what happens after that. You go from that yeah. to you. Yeah, I was I asked George a question. That was such a wrong move. Yeah. <laughs> Keep asking questions. You should have. You should have X Factor. You should have the X Factor buzzers. I have a megaphone. Yeah, we, I we, might go get we it. We almost did, but yeah, where's the megaphone? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This was meant to be for Luca, but I think I need oh, it. Nice. <laughs> I'm touched that that didn't come out with Luca and has come out with me. I'm hurt actually. Not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, bring it back into the house because I can't think of it. Anymore. All right. So uh well let's let's throw this one back to Zan. So um, Zan, Jim Maker is, is almost as famous, if not more famous, as famous for its unaged overproofs as it is its aged drugs. Yes, um, and there's no denying that Jamaican DNA coming through. And I think, you know, one of the things that uh, just in our last session, Frank Ward mentioned was like the real test of a distiller is the, the unaged rum he can make, you know, what, what it comes like when it's off a still and, you, you, you know, uh, you guys have brought out some incredible rums, rum bar and, and you know, bartender favorites like that. What's, you know, how much identity is tied up just just in the, the pure distillate before aging, before anything else? You know, what, what is unaged overproof to you? Oh, it's everything. I mean, just to give you some context of the Jamaican overproof market, we have 2.9, roughly 2.9 million people in Jamaica. And we go through as an industry, um, as a category, I should say, about 600,000 nine liter cases of overproof on the island alone, not export, uh, not in any other market, just in Jamaica. So um, just to give you a little bit of context of, of how much we drink of it on, on the island. And I think- so I found out a fun fact then. What's that? I found, out that? I found out a fun fact about Jamaica, that Jamaica per square mile has more rum bars than anywhere else in the world. And churches. <laughs> And, I, I, and, we, and we have the busiest KFC as well in Montego Bay. That's not a good thing, Zan. That's not a good thing. Oh, but if you've ever had Jamaican KFC, Jamaican KFC is the shit. I will never, I will, I will, go, I will support Jamaican KFC till I die. And you're not I won't eat it overseas. I won't eat it anywhere else but Jamaica. No, but you're not wow. even supposed to say that because your auntie owns Island Grill. That's a direct competitor. I'll eat Island Grill over KFC. And to say, Leah, I love you. Uh, I'll eat Island Grill over KFC, but I'll eat KFC in Jamaica over KFC anywhere else in the world. Cool sign. It's the best. It's it's a national treasure. Yeah. Barbecue? Barbecue? Yeah. 
Barbecue, hot and spicy? Yeah. I'm, well, I'm, I'm the hot and spicy, naturally. You are oh. so hot and spicy, girl. It is insane. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be the barbecue. George, George will be the mashed potatoes. Yes. <laughs> mashed potato. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. I don't even know what the question was anymore. But no, now, it was just the like, wrong word. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, yeah, white rum. Sorry, yeah, yeah, white rum. I think the other thing, and you know, Christelle should would would agree with me. You know, white rum in Jamaica is not is not just something that we drink, right? Like every house in Jamaica will have a bottle of white rum, and it's because it's used for you know when you're sick. Um, it's used for if you're yeah fever, if you're congested, if you have a little flu coming on, take a shot of. You know, white rum with some lime and honey. If your you know funerals are really big in Jamaica, and you have to have uh, you have some called nine night, which is you know nine nights after the person passed away. And there's always rum. Like rum is like white rum is everything in Jamaica. And I don't yeah. want them to drink it at the funerals either. They yeah. throw it on, they throw it on yeah. the ground as an homage to the person who has passed. And even when you're like you're at a party or you're out in you know in a drink like in outdoors. You always see people just throwing uh, rum on the ground because that's the, the first sip is for the people that have passed before, and it really comes from the white rum. It's it's a white rum cultural reference. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's. I mean, like you know, one of the guys that works out here, he got caught in you know in the rain, and it's very, a lot of it's very superstitious as well, right? He got caught in the rain, and he had to literally rub himself down with white rum so he didn't catch sick. And like it, it it's hilariously wow. ridiculous, but it's true. Like it is part of the. You know, a lot of the superstitions here. So, Zan, if you could yeah. only drink gold rum or white rum for the rest of your life, what would it be? Well, what, what does that even mean, George? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, yeah. George, it's a question, yeah. Zan. Don't read yeah. too much into it. No, but I mean, like, what does gold rum even mean, you know? That's, okay, okay. Well, uh, okay. age or other age is a different story. Age yeah. or other age is a different story. Um, I'm talking about as as Christelle was saying. There's a real, you know, it's a it's a white rum thing. It's like almost a cultural thing more than it being a liquid thing. Yeah. So would you rather white? Just answer the question: white rum or gold rum? Well, I think you what you really mean is: do I like unaged rum or aged rum? No, I don't mean that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tee you up, Zan. I'm gonna tee you up here for something here um is it is it true that uh ray and nephew is by far and away the top selling jamaican white rum oh yeah uh, hands down oh no 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 no, no. wait okay you, i thought <laughs> i thought last time i came there you were your your sales on ray and nephews were, were going real good Buddy, if that was the case, I wouldn't be sitting on on the couch here. I'd be flying my private jet to be with Mitch and Don in, in studio. <laughs> oh shit! No, no, no. Really, I mean, Grand Nephew is is you know the white rum of Jamaica because it's been it's the biggest brand for centuries. You know, Jamaican rum historically was never branded, so even though we had you know in the mid nineteen in mid eighteen hundreds, you know six hundred and something distilleries, you know we were no one was branding it. You know, it's a throwback to. How we made sugar, how we how we were as a colony. Everything was made as a commodity. So, you know, Ray and nephew was the first to actually like create a brand, and you know, nobody really followed suit until. I mean, look at look at Hamden and Money and and Worthy Park. Combined, we've been around for six hundred and something years, and we've only branded our own rum within the past fifteen. But also so, branded it branded it literally because of the name of the distillery, right? No, just in general, just even any bottled branded rum is coming off the island. Yeah, rum fire, 2010, 2011. But if you, but if you look at the, the, the kind of brand, you know, in a, in a wider sense, you know, vodkas, a lot of gins, you know, they're not named after the name of the shitty still they came out of or the, <laughs> the, kind, the kind of land that they're on, whereas a whole load of rums are obviously Worthy Park is called Worthy Park because it comes from Worthy Park, same with Hamden. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and, that, and that's the beauty of, you know, Jamaica is, you know, we're, each one of us is telling a different story through our rum. So it, mm. it makes sense for us to 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 want to promote our rum, our, our distillery name, our estate names, uh, when we're selling our rum, because we're all different. I mean, vodka's vodka's vodka, you know, it, 
it, it's pretty, um, I don't know. I don't even know how to talk about Ralph. This is interesting though, you know, Zan, because the, the point that George is making, actually, I wouldn't have understood or made that point. <laughs> no, when we I mean, feel like a lot of what George says, we could all say that. When we came out with the product rum file, because we did not understand how important rum was, and we didn't understand how important the actual entity Hamden Estate would be yeah. to the rum community, because we never really realized it existed in yeah. terms of the the understanding of it as being from somewhere special. Yeah. I mm. have not heard of Hamden before. I'd yeah. never heard of Worthy Park before. The only thing I ever heard of was Appleton. So at that point in time, even though it was only 10 years ago, nobody knew about these places in Jamaica. So we actually, I mean, I'm maybe I was just speaking for myself, but um, my family and I, we didn't know that there would be such importance placed on the geographical entity Hamden Estate and its recognition internationally. It was only when we took over, my grandfather said, well, if it's so, if it's so um, important that, you know, they, we have these relationships with third party, uh, you know, bulk run buyers and they're paying so much money for it, then it must be worth something. There must be some sort of recognition. That's when we decided to bottle a product. But again, we didn't really understand the importance of Hamden Estate. So we came up with this thing called Rum File. Don't even ask. <laughs> but... <laughs> um, but uh, and then we started started aging in Jamaica because we realized that, oh, so when we send all the rum to Europe, they're putting some of it in barrels and they can sell it for even more money. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I don't know how much we really realized that the, the geography was important and that um, there would be this recognition that would translate to uh, oh, wow financial yeah. success and the ability to create a brand you know that's outside of this thing called appleton estate yeah no 100 percent. i mean when you're in jamaica you know even up to now people still get confused people are like oh you so you work for Christelle? you work for Rump? i'm like no we're a completely different estate, different location but um uh yeah you're right we we're all late to our own game in a, in a weird way to say it you know we're all just catching on mm -hmm. in jamaica years and decades after you know, everybody overseas is because our relationship with rum is different. Like rum is just, you grow up with rum. So not that it's not special, but it's so much a part of, you know, of your experience and your life growing up that it's just rum. You know, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's only in recent years that we're really focusing on, you know, the differentiation between what makes Worthy Park and Hamden and Appleton and, and, you know, Long Pond and New York, everything different. So yeah, Christelle, bang on. And si since you have made those changes, both at Hampton and Worthy Park, like what, what has been your experience? What, how has that changed, uh, you know, the distillery? The, how has that changed what, what you guys are doing there? Um, no, it's definitely uh, put us on a, on a focus now of, of seeing how we can kind of leverage our, our size. As, you know, we're still a relatively small producer, but how can we can we can differentiate ourselves more on, on the global stage away from, you know, the market leader being, being Appleton, because we are very unique and we are very different and our scales of, of economies of scale are much different. So it's, it's allowed us or it's forced us to focus a little bit more on, you know, how we can play to, to what our strengths are, um, whether it's, you know, smaller bottlings or, or smaller releases or, you know, just it, it's, it's focused us on making sure that we're presented differently and, and, and uniquely against all the other uh, distilleries here in Jamaica. And, and again, it's not that we're trying to position ourselves as the best because we're all different, but it's just that this is what makes us different as we're the park versus you know, everybody else. Sure. You okay, Christelle? I know you've got George here, but please don't. <laughs> Just, you can turn my screen off if you want. <laughs> no, um, I was going to endorse that, but at the same time... Um, you cough. I know I did, eh? <laughs> you got me excited. I, I, I had to catch my breath. Um, we, I don't think there was any point in time where... Uh, in the past, we would have been able to think of ourselves as standing on the same stage as the big boy, Apple yeah. Country and Nephew. And not to say that we're anything close to their sales or 
you know, as, as Dan said, it's not that we're better or they're better, but the fact that we can actually be celebrated on the same stage as Jamaica Rum and be able to celebrate our diversity and know that we're bringing, know that each of us is bringing something very different to the table while still being a part of this unique Jamaica, Jamaica Rum product. Um, that is something that is quite remarkable for us and in, in you know, how, how it's changed is that we took over this distillery because it was attached to a sugar factory, not geographically, but as a part of the government divestment. It was my grandfather's dream to own a sugar factory when he was when he was alive. He was brought up in a time when sugar was king. And he worked at Money Musk um, Sugar Estate. And he was a he was timekeeper for the estate when he was a teenager. And Never in his wildest dreams did he think he would ever own a sugar estate. And then with it, um, the rum distillery. So how have things changed? Um, they've changed remarkably. And but I think a big part of that is also the relationships that we've formed and the belief that there has been in Hamden by the, by the partners that we have. So it's changed exponentially for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, we couldn't have predicted it. And we're happy to be able to um, have to keep up with the demand because we've done a lot of infrastructural improvements recently that I don't think we could have foreseen having to do either. So it's changed it's, it's the landscape dramatically. And it feels like Jamaica's almost starting to come back and have a 360 because, you know, Jamaica was one of the most popular rums in the UK back, you know, when time began. And, and I think it's super exciting because we're seeing it now, that kind of Jamaican revolution and it seems to be coming home to the UK very, very much so. And, and I think we're all excited about that because, you know, I think all of us are, well, Worthy Park was our rum of the year this year, um, or our spirit of the year. And, you know, that's, that's fantastic to kind of have something so amazing um, to be recognized as, 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 as what it is. And, and that's, you know, I think it's, it's exciting to see what you guys are doing. Um, Less excited to see what George is doing. Okay, George. Okay. You have what? No, Zan, this is for you. <laughs> um, Zan, Zan and Chriselle, speaking, speaking on behalf of Jamaica Rum rather than Sorry. your respective. My, my dog was knocking on the door to be let in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Speaking, <laughs> speaking as Jamaica Rum rather than as your individual brands, what, what would you wish, what do you wish happened more? Is there something you know jamaican government could be doing more and obviously you guys are doing an incredible job and jamaican rums flying but is there anything you wish could be so i mean i think overall you know i love seeing what all the the distilleries are doing in jamaica because everything like you know i i, I smile every time i see hamden out there and i'm not even shitting you because you know it is a true story like it's, it's great to see you know the jamaican rum brands out there and especially with you know Cristal's my friend and our families are all friends and and it's great when I'm out on the road and you know we see her rum being out there and you know seeing our rum out there and, and I think Jamaica rum as to be identified and respected as a category um, is is really what you know I want to push for or what I would love to see because you know I, there's some great rum from everywhere but you know I want to I want Jamaica rum to be identified its own kind of unique identity because so much of what we're doing on the island now is, is is all very similar in how we produce and you know with you know obviously Hamden and Worthy Park we share a lot of similarities but yet we're all so different but at the end of the day you know we're all Jamaica rum and we're all supporting each other as, as, as much as we're you know competing with each other even more I mean we support each other nice. more I'd say that's also awesome. um, one of the things that I would love to see happen in Jamaica is well i mean this is not international but in jamaica one of the things that i think would benefit us very much as an industry and even as a tour you know as something that would add to the tourism product is for jamaica rum to be given preferential treatment in terms of taxation um, because when you look at the products being brought into jamaica not just rum but even outside of rum um it creates a very unlevel playing field particularly considering that Jamaica rum consumed in Jamaica um, at higher percentage ABV um, could really be like the backbone of a lot of linkages 
and you see a, you see a lot of um, preference being given to other spirit categories in some ways. Um, I think that's something that we could definitely benefit from at home, but I certainly don't think necessarily this is the right for it. But since you asked, yeah. that's something that I think we would definitely benefit from. Yeah, the, the amount that we have to pay that gets paid in SCT, which is special consumption tax, you know, on a case of overproof rum, like over, I think it's like 60 or 70% of it is gone in taxes. It's crazy yeah. how much wow. we pay. All into Jamaica. All yeah. into the, yeah. Interesting. But, so you, uh, you have higher duties than us in a funny way, and we have pretty high duties. Yeah. yeah. That is scary. Is that even for exports, Anne, or just when it's consumed just, just in Jamaica? Like when, yeah. we're, when we're exporting, it's all duty-free. Um, from Jamaica. I mean, you obviously pay wherever you're importing it into, but, yeah. um, you know, all, all, all rum sold once it leaves our, 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 the excise part of our warehouse, we have to pay um, a lot of taxes, a lot of taxes. So what's the future for Jamaica? Where, what's, what's, what's next? I mean, we, we've just seen, we've got Joy on in, in the next, on one of the next sessions and, you know, she's just relaunched, you, Joy. Uh, you know, uh, which is super exciting. And, you know, so what, what's in the future for you guys? What's, where, do you, where do you see yourselves sort of moving as, as in terms of a country and in terms of your each individual distilleries? And George, of course, is gonna create the Dundercats Crocodile pig, ducky bird. Yes, we gotta do it. <laughs> Exclusive. Um, so, you wanna go first? Um, I, sorry, I was kind of zoning out. I was reading all the comments. <laughs> <laughs> I just got super starstruck because Luca like said "Brava, Christelle," and I was like, "Oh my god, what did I say?" I got super insecure. I didn't realize that all these people were commenting. Were you asking about what's next for Jamaica Rum? Yeah. yeah. Um, and for you, and for you. Yeah, um, well, actually I just mentioned Luca's name. Uh, as I said before, I'm really grateful for a partnership with a company that has really passionate people behind it and on um, this LMNB and that has distribution partners internationally who get our products and who are, you know, equally or maybe even more passionate than we are here um, in Jamaica about it. Um, so really it's a lot, it's about a lot of collaborations deciding on what comes next. So our next thing that we have out of the distillery is the 2020 edition of uh, our distillery edition, Great House, which was intended to be a sale only at the distillery, but because of all of the interest from our lovely connoisseurs internationally, um, we've decided to make it available in, in limited edition, in, in limited numbers. Uh, internationally. So what's next for us? Uh, I like to be able to stand on the same platform as the rest of my Jamaica rum family. Uh, and I'm very fortunate, I think that we are very fortunate to be blessed with um, Dr. Joyce Spence because she is a stalwart in the industry and she's a huge supporter of other Jamaica rum brands and people like me and Zan and she's always here for us. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to see us doing a lot more um, especially now that, you know, we're in a different era where we're not necessarily on a plane every week. Um, we're, we're doing a lot more. We have to create more synergies online and um, in a virtual way. So I'd like to see some of that. And I think that there's a lot more of that to come. And yeah, I love, I have said it in jest before, but I'm still going to put it out into the universe. I would love to one day do a Worthy Park Hamden Pot still, like, ooh, that's, George, that's, George, that's yeah. would be very sexy. And I let's think do, let's do it on, on Rum Day. When's World Rum Day? Isn't it in August? Yeah, but I mean, no, like, we've had it, I think. I want a product, product. like, I want a Hamden worthy part, oh. limited edition, um, limited release one of these days. Let's do a Hamden worthy <laughs> part day. <laughs> Let's do it. Can I have that exclusive, Christelle? <laughs> I think there's, there's quite anything, a few comments. You know, we can talk about anything at point in time. I'm also looking for a husband, so if anybody can find me a nice husband, you have oh the... Oh, my God, there's 900 people now. Christelle <laughs> crashed our stream. Are you yeah. going to bring, or are you saying that you found one for me? I, I know of one, Christelle. Okay, call me. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> Christelle actually, Christelle and I had a very romantic uh, tryst to the polo in Jamaica. Do you remember that? <laughs> We've all blocked your trip out of our minds. Jamaica. Yeah, I know. I remember it though. I remember it. We went up to Jamaica. To, to that place, and you were taking pictures with um, what is that place called up in um, on a Sunday? Dub Club. We went to Dub Club together, yeah. and you were taking cases in my front office at the hotel, and you were digging through everything, and they thought you were absolutely batshit crazy. <laughs> they, got, they got one thing right. No, that was fun that night. More yeah, fun than all nights, Anne. One of the um, last times I was at Dub Club was when you with your your mom was there, Christelle. Mommy's actually watching her mom. Hey. She probably doesn't remember. Hey, but there. I think, uh, Benny, was Benny was there. Happy. Benny was there. Not, she she wasn't happy about that evening about her 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 excitement. I don't know if your mom's too happy to meet her future son-in-law either. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, right. Remy, Remy, we've met. Um, we have no, met. No, no. Christelle Nud Strand uh, or Knud Strand says, Christelle, you just have too much choice. <laughs> Head is swelling. But he is holding a bottle of, I don't even know what rum that is. It's, um, it's okay. He's allowed. Okay, good rum, Nud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good <George. laughs> I think I do need to go to the gym for a week because my stomach muscles are going to be like, I can have a six pack after this session. Oh, for sure, for sure. H hands up if you've accidentally peed yourself a little bit on this call. <laughs> Mitch, come yeah. on. Uh, we want the other one, the yes, other ones. Um, I don't know how I can follow that up um, with Christelle's. Uh, you know, beautiful words, but I think, uh, what was the question? I know what that <laughs> You've already answered it. <laughs> it's what connects to Jamaica, wasn't it? What's the next the future, oh, the future, the future, the future. Um, yeah, um, for Jamaican rum, I think the next uh, future is global domination. Um, but aside from that, um, you know, I think at Worthy Park, we're just gonna keep pushing ahead. You know, we're, we're, we're doing a lot you know, in the Jamaican market to, you know, to try to make some waves. And um, I think internationally as well, we've got, you know, pre COVID, we had a, a ton of releases lined up for the year, but they've all got pushed back a little bit. But I think Wait, we just- why? Want... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I sent my children upstairs for this, so I wouldn't have this, you know, have that kind of chirping in my ear all the time. But I forgot that we were so I might as well just have left them, left them beside me. But uh, I think the future for Worthy Park is hopefully we can hopefully we can do some more collaborations, like Christelle was saying. That would be fucking awesome. Um, and uh, already, I know what's yeah. next for Worthy Park. What's that? I believe you you owe me a couple of car samples. Yes, I do. Yes. I do. Um, yeah, we want to do maybe a, a TWE exclusive before the end of the year. Thank you. Yeah. Now, you now, now excuses now. Zan, <laughs> Zan, has there has there ever been a, a within Jamaican distillers a pre aging blend? I.e., when when the, as in when they're blended before the aging process between two um, different distilleries. No, no. They've done the cats. <laughs> I mean, there's probably a reason why that hasn't been done. That's, That's it. it. Okay. That's it. No, oh my no. Guys, let's do a Hamden Worthy Park unaged and aged blend using the same marks. Oh. oh. I'm, sure. I'm catching what you're throwing. I like it. I dig it. I dig it. Maybe. It's got to have hashtag Dundercat somewhere on the bottle. <laughs> I, yeah, I, think, I think whoever does the next release, we need Dundercats. Oh, it's an incredible name. For Jamaican rum, it's insane. Mitch. Yeah. <laughs> one, one Mitch. I just, want, I just want to see a picture of, of George's crocodilla. crocodilla. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. It's late, Zan. It's late. 
<laughs> Be careful what you wish for at eleven thirty one when George is all alone at his in his boring <laughs> country house. You have a country house? I, know, well, right? mums. I didn't want to sound lame and say I was living at my mum's. It's my mum's. <laughs> you know, I want I want um, Clive oh, O. Edwards and oh, Stephen Gunter to like me. There aren't many female followers on these comments. Are there any girls watching this? <laughs> There's a fun man. There's a Joe could be. Is Joe a girl? Joe is very much a female. <laughs> Does anyone want Jennifer? <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer has said Jennifer Jennifer has said hiya Zan Kong and Christelle Harris. Hi. <laughs> no hi to me. Everyone gives you some love now, please. <laughs> Lolita. Lolita, does anyone know Lolita? Of course. Big up oh. Lolita. Debra, Debra Reed has said hello. Hi, Debra. Yes. <laughs> and okay. Caroline. This is not Tinder. This is an no, yes. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Yes. My mom just texted me. <laughs> no, don't say it. Don't. She, says name, no, she says the name of the room that we're putting out, Zan. It's called Hamworthy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. There you go. Hamworthy, the Hamworthy Dundercats. With a crocodile pig. Yeah. It's a pig. It's pork. a crocodile pig, which I think is a bit nicer. <laughs> So <laughs> God, you guys can take the rest of the night off. We've got this for the next 12 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to be good. <laughs> oh, my God. It hurts so much. Is there a question for the coach? Oh, does anyone have any questions for, for George? <laughs> George? Come on, please ask George a question. <laughs> <laughs> please. Should I give it up? It's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> she never got the giggle. <laughs> John. <laughs> perfect naming. Come on, guys. Where's the question? Fiona C. Bruce, where's the question? You can ask George anything. Anything. <laughs> anything. Ask George a question. Somebody ask him. George, what's your favorite ice cream? What's next from you? Someone needs to spray George with a, ho with a hose. <laughs> It is, it, is, it is Friday night, George. It is Friday night. Hey, Zan, do you want to? You got your hose there? <laughs> uh, there we go. Somebody says, Yes, George. What's the blend in Juppy Share? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. The blend, Ned, good question. Ned. The blend is a five year old from Four Square Distillery and a three year old, unfortunately, from Zan's Distillery. 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 <laughs> Distillery. <laughs> <laughs> well, George, I think you need to come to part row because you've got to do the rest of the 12 hours. Yeah, 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 I'm there. I'm actually, if you look outside the window, Dawn. <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> That's Jesus not a country Christ. house. <laughs> oh, wait, Chocky oh. Tom has said George plus Doppy, Duppy equals Guppy share. <laughs> <laughs> Chocky, awesome. Thank you, Chocky. Yeah. She also said that he's, he's speed dating in his mom's basement right now. Did you see that comment? <laughs> 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 Uh, this, this is amazing. This, what what an epic, uh, however long it's been. I mean, <laughs> it's awesome. George, oh my God, there are new comments. These comments are insane. <laughs> hey, that, Nud, we'll use that in our, um, that'll go on our website, Nud. Thanks to Duffy, there is now drinkable rum in pubs. No. <laughs> Zan, any chance of a rum bar 50% ABV? Um, 
We don't have any in the works, but anything's possible. There's always a chance, Ray. There's always a chance. Nice. Um, someone's just asked one. You can, yeah, you can get person. Uh, someone asked one. Oh, no, no, it's not there. Oh, yeah, any special versions? We've got our spice. We've got our spice, and we might be... Oh, what do you guys think of this? We might be bringing out a white rum. Oh, what's it going to be called? The Crocodilla Pig? The Crocker Thunder Cat. Thunder Cat. <laughs> Oh gosh! So wait, George, do you like gold rum or white rum better? Well, it depends. <laughs> it is Zan, right? Is it Zan? Yeah. I don't. I don't think that's the question you're asking. Brian Jackson has a question, which is, is actually really uh, relevant. How can we get more Jamaican rums at the MBJ duty free? Yes. Oh. Um. Are you there, Crystal? I'm having such a hard time. I'm I'm there with rum file, but I've submitted Hamden Estate rums for like over a year now, and they just can't get accepted because apparently they have to go through their head office and whatever, and they don't they don't think there's any value to it because nobody knows what it is. Yeah, so they don't we have to put their they don't want to take up their shelf space with it. Yeah, it's it's that one is is Kingston Duty Free has a ton of yeah. Um, Really good selection because it's, it's Jamaican owned, right? So it's yeah. a little more emphasis on Jamaican around. But the MBJ is is a group duty free with a I can't remember the name that owns them. Do free. It's do free. Uh, yeah. do free. So we have we have our rum bar, rum cream, overproof, and gold there, and we're we're supposed to be getting sure. our, we're supposed to be getting our single estate there. But same like Costello, it's just um, a waiting game. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's not it's not for lack of trying from the Hamden and Worthy Park side. No. So we've got a question: When is Worthy Park and actually Black Talk going to be available in um, where was it Australia? Hold on, sorry, come back. Australia, yeah. Um, actually, I'm in just pretty. I'm in discussions with a distributor and importer in Australia, so we're working on um, some label stuff and what the different requirements are. But yeah, you know, hopefully uh, in 2021 you'll you'll have it there definitely. So it's it's in the works. We're in, we're in discussion now. And Mitch Blacktop, um, Black <clears throat> Blacktop, I believe has landed today. Now, <laughs> yes, it's landed today. Um, nothing like. How did you get confirmation of that so quickly? <laughs> we have a secret squirrel. I mean, can yeah. you not see Chanel on your yeah, screen? Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm hearing it's landed in. Australia <laughs> today. Yeah, it's just landed. It's just landed. <laughs> Now, uh, yes, so yeah. it's now available in Australia. Uh, I believe Alba Whiskey have it over there. So uh, hit them up and you'll be able to, you'll start seeing Black Top popping up in all the right places. So uh, awesome. Oh, um, so guys, I mean, honestly, I don't know how much we found out about anything that we, we just, we just sort of got rid of the questions about an hour and a half ago. <laughs> um, so those of you who wanted us to answer, get any of those questions answered, tough shit, we got George instead. <laughs> Let's be real, Don. Let's be real, Don and Mitch. You didn't put Duppy George on here and expect it to happen. <laughs> yeah. Let's be real. Let's be real about it. <laughs> well, when when you went down your list and you got to George Fox, you didn't think, no, this is going to be like a Botanica for an hour and a half. That is not what we're going to do. Um, I'm gonna, Dawn, I'm just, I'm gonna, Dawn, I'm gonna massively surprise you here and interrupt and say, uh, just, just an epically massive, amazing. I, the other two haven't been drinking, haven't been getting high on their own supply at all. But a massive, a massive thank you to you, Dawn. Anyone, anyone who somehow hasn't had the joy of meeting Dawn, as far as the Rum family goes, she's very much a part of it, but also lives by the rum mantra and mitch i've only e-met you recently but you clearly tick all those boxes so come on cheers, cheers. cheers guys. what a pleasure what an absolutely <laughs> epic epic session i mean mitch and i laugh a lot when we're together but i have to say i don't think we've ever been quite so floored <laughs> that was epic General 
choice. It's absolutely brilliant. Is it? Yes, is that I think I mean? fell in love with George a little bit more. So everybody here was mad. We, we need to work on your mum, though. Is she watching? I don't know. Yeah, mommy's watching. And it's, she's good. Mommy loves you. Oh, mommy, I don't know if you're listening or watching, but George just blew you a very big kiss with both hands. Yeah. <laughs> is he? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> hey guys, you are awesome and you know, uh, we have so much love and respect for all of you guys and yeah. you know, we we so appreciate you coming out tonight and it's been late for George, you know, he should have been in bed hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> his mom's going to start calling for his bedtime soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely brilliant. And, you know, Zan's a constant source of love for me and I absolutely adore him. And thank you for being such an amazing friend. And, you know, Christelle, you are just beauty personified and a brain to go with it, which is the best thing ever. And George, Mitch, how are you? <laughs> George, you and, you and I. Shut up, mum. Trailer together. <laughs> <laughs> love you guys. Love you guys. Thank oh you. Oh my God, that's one yeah, of ours on the nose. <laughs> it, how long was it meant to be? An hour? An hour? It's like, it's like we planned no. it. <laughs> Easy. Easy. Yeah. Guys. Good. But Diamond Mitch, great guys. Together. Yes, thank you Good so job. much. Yeah. Thanks for having me twice. And um, to the next one being um, Black Top for sure. I'm going to get smashed <laughs> on it next time. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, take that as a great marketing quote from the Duffy share. I'm going to get smashed on Black Talk next time. I've got our guys writing that down right now for the quote. Yeah. <laughs> and on the website. Without any better quotes. <laughs> yeah, it's done. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Right, um, guys. Guys, so much love. Rum Thanks love. Everyone. We'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Um, I need wow. to go fix my makeup. <laughs>